Hey guys, it's Wanda and welcome back to the Cannon Kitchen. Today I've already gotten started. I'm going to be making Mayha jelly, but it's going to have a deep south twist. So today we're going to be using the juicer steamer and I've already got it on the back burner back here, uh, or the big burner, going with my Mayhaws in it. So we're going to be making juice with the Mayhaws. Once that's done, we'll start the jelly. But I have everything set up already. I've got my jars in this big pot that's over here. I'm going to be using a little quarter pint and half pint jars. I've got rings and lids. I've got all my utensils out and things like that. I've got everything cleaned up and set up so that when we go to make jelly, jelly's a wham bam thank you. We gotta hurry up. So we've got probably an hour before the juice is ready and I'll be showing you a little bit more about the juicer steamer. A lot of you've never seen a juicer steamer. Now this has three pots. The bottom pot holds your water. The middle pot has a funnel in it like a um, pound cake funnel and the top pot has your um, perforated holes in it like a strainer and that top pot is where you put your berries and then it has a lid of course and this section right here is for draining the juice it's just like an ivy pole you mash this and it lets the juice out and you mash it back and it clamps it off we just keep it up here out of the way so it doesn't get into the fire or anything like that. Um, and the reason we go ahead and leave it on is because we don't want juice to get up in this and start pouring out here. Now this has just started. We've got a little while to go. And I've got a couple of projects I need to be doing that are close by. All right, the berries haven't even started to steam down yet, but you can see it's starting to, starting to build on the lid and you can see through it but I can smell it smells like crab apples or mini apples here my jars in water I'm just gonna get them hot and let them just sit in that water for a little while all my paraphernalia and we got a little mm hmm we're gonna do that's gonna give it a twist here while I'm waiting my car needs a bath, so I thought I'd pull it right there because I have a hose right here and give my car a bath. And uh, y'all, the rocking chair is calling. Y'all told me to get me a chair and wait. Well, with jelly, there ain't no waiting. But with making the juice, there's some wait time. Hmm. Wash car, sit in rocking chair. Many years ago, before Danny and I married, there were roses up and down this sidewalk. And every year we have to dig up a rose because it comes back from the root that is under the sidewalk. We've dug all the roses up and we planted huckleberries down the whole sidewalk. But this one rose keeps coming out and this year it actually bloomed. We didn't catch it, so it bloomed, so I'm gonna leave it. We've got the lantana here and the huckleberries. All right, this tree is really loaded and I just picked the back side of it over there. But look at the berries and such good size berries. And then this one, it's the same way. It has lots of good sized berries on it. I've already picked two cups. Isn't that awesome? And there's probably another two cups on these two trees alone. And looking down through here, there's some on this one that's ready. This one that's ready. Uh, this one down here has some that's ready. Look at this one. I'm talking berries. So I know I can get two cups out of all these. There's some on this one that's ready. Ah, look at this one. 
So I didn't get my car washed. There's a few on that one, that one. That one's still got little ones. This one's got big ones that are ready. And because of the size, it fills up in a hurry. So I have two cups. I'm gonna see if I can get two more. I put these in the freezer. And when I want something with my oatmeal, I throw about a handful of them in my oatmeal or a handful in some cookie dough or in the cake batter or make a cobbler. You can make jelly. I have quite a bit of jelly. Check out my jelly recipe for huckleberry jelly. It might be on crazy days. You'll have to check it out. It's on deep south or crazy days, one of the two. I ended up with three cups so far of huckleberries. I'll probably go back and finish filling that four cup um, container in a little bit, but I just turned the fire off. You can see juice already coming up in the hose. Um, let the steam dissipate. I always keep it toward that way so it don't burn your hand. You can see the berries have um, lost their color. I'm going to mash on just a little bit to see if any juice is still in them, but I doubt it. I think it's all in pot number two. You see how pretty the juice looks? We're going to take out four cups of juice and set the rest aside. And this is how much water we had left. So I'm going to set it out. We'll clean everything up in a little while and we're fixing to start the jelly. We're ready to make the jelly. And I've already put two cups and I'm putting two more cups of the juice in here. I'm going to do one package of Sure Gel. And we'll start the fire in just a minute, but I wanted to get all this in there. And I talked to Miss Slippy, and she said to add an extra tablespoon of Sure Gel or powdered pectin, whatever you're using, because we're in a humid climate. Let's add two. There's one. Two tablespoons of lemon juice before we add our secret ingredient. We're going to be stirring the pectin and the juice. And so while this is heating, we want to add our secret ingredient. And I'm going to be adding jalapeno peppers, chopped up real fine. Lots of people make pepper jelly and they don't uh, use anything but a bunch of peppers. And they add um, apple cider vinegar to it. I'm just adding chopped up peppers. This is probably maybe a quarter of a cup, third of a cup, something like that. And we're adding it now. And we're gonna let those kinda cook down in my jelly. So this is going to be Mayha jelly with a hot pepper twist. Now lots of people, the reason they make uh, pepper jelly and they add apple cider vinegar is because they make a consistency, something like this. Now I put this in the blender and this is what I got. And I did not want that in my jelly. I wanted pieces like you see there. And the pieces are so much prettier in a jar than a blended up mess that turns green. Okay, so now that we have our peppers, we're going to just stir it and let this come to a boil. I've got it on high. And it's going to be difficult to show every bit of this because I don't have a stand up here showing you down in here. So I'm going to use my phone off and on and capture what I see in there. But this pepper stuff here goes great in cornbread and I could add a dab to my peas and stuff like that. So it's not going to waste. But I wanted to show you how some people blend their peppers up like this and make jelly from uh, sweet peppers and jalapenos and then they add apple cider vinegar and turn it in add gobs of sugar and turn it into a jelly we're not doing that 
We're using the chopped up peppers and we're going to make a Mayha jelly with hot peppers in it. And I did not have to use this big of a pot, but sometimes jelly foams, and I did not want it foaming up and out of the pot. And so I used a big pot, bigger than what I need. And it's not a good idea to double jelly recipes, because lots of times when you double the recipes, you end up with a mess. When I, the last time I made Mayha jelly, I did not put enough pectin in it. And, um, that way I did not get jelly, I got a soft gel. And that's what I've been using in my cookies and stuff like that, is I take some of that soft gel Mayha jelly and add it to a cookie dough mix. And you talking about a good cookie, it makes a good cookie. And the reason I'm letting this cook for a little bit and sit and boil is that I wanted the peppers to soften up a little. I didn't want crunchy peppers in my jelly. So I'm going to let this boil just another minute or so, and I'm going to start adding the sugar. And once we add the sugar, it's game on. We're ready to go. And this is what it's looking like right now. It's getting hot. You can see all the specks of pepper over in your jelly. And that's what we want, that tangy, mayha taste. Sweet, like with the jelly, but hot with the pepper. And it's starting to come to a boil. You can see that. And we want it to come to a pretty good boil. I'm fixing to add sugar in a few minutes. I'm gonna let it boil a few minutes. Then I'm gonna add five cups of sugar. Yes, more sugar than I added juice. I added four cups of juice. We're adding five cups of sugar. And the camera doesn't do it justice. It looks redder. It, I look, in the camera, to me, it looks orange. But when I'm looking at it in the pot, it is very red. So it's hard to tell. We're going to start adding sugar now. There's one. Two. Three. And we have to hurry. Four, because I got to get to stirring. Five. And then you want to start stirring and getting this incorporated because it's going to come to a rapid boil in just a little bit. It don't take, once you start with the juice, less than 15 minutes you've got jelly and ready to jar up. all to incorporate and melt. You see how pretty and red it's getting. And we want a rolling boil because we do not want um, be able to stir it down. See it's not even back to a boil yet so we're going to give it a few minutes. Probably about two minutes. And I don't know any other way to do anything with Mayha's other than to make the juice, sweeten it and drink it or add it to teas or whatever you want to do with it. That way uh, take the juice and possibly make it into a pie. Use it instead of milk and make a pie. Or add it to your um, cookies a spoonful at a time to make some nice tangy something. I mean, you'd have to sweeten it, but yeah, it would make a good cookie like I do with the soft gels. But Mayhaw's is one of those fruits that's not as good if you eat it um, by itself. It's a tangy little 
crab apple type fruit, if that's what you want to know how it tastes. It tastes kind of like a crab apple would. It's real tangy. It resembles a crab apple, but it's actually called, in some places, hawthorn berries. And there's lots of um, stickers on these trees because mine are native. And so you don't want to be messing with it too terribly much, but um, we're getting there, y'all. It's fixing to come up to a bowl. So I'm going to let it boil for a minute. It had not got to the, can't stir down, but you see that? It's already getting to a gel stage. Okay, you can see it's getting to a boil, but we need it at a rapid, see how it's starting? We can't stir down boil. Now I've got to be stirring and try and hold the camera, and that does get difficult. And we have to time it for one minute and turn it off. I turned it off and you see the boil is going on back down. We're just going to jar this up. Putting this in the little quarter pints. Fill into the rim. We've got to wipe the lids really good. And this is where your vinegar comes in for wiping lids instead of putting it in your jelly. And then I have my rings and my lids ready. Tighten. What do you think? It's beautiful. You just got flakes of hot peppers in your Mayha jelly. Isn't that beautiful? And that is my Mayha hot pepper jelly, guys. The one without the lids going in, I'm going to fix some uh, cream cheese and crackers later. But you can see the specks in the jelly. That's what I want. And Mayha hot pepper jelly. Thank you guys for stopping by the Cannon Kitchen. We'll see you later.